Hello, hello. Welcome to a slightly strained, but very important live with me today. In fact, I got my tea to help with this froggy throat. Hopefully it sounds better to you than it sounds to me right now. But I wasn't going to postpone this live just because my voice is strained today because it's a super important message for everyone. What do you do if you get a tick bite? I get asked about this all the time. In fact, this week alone, I've answered multiple questions from friends and family and others out in the Lyme community that have gotten tick bites or know someone that has in their life and they've come to me saying, what do I do? What do I tell this person? Or what do I do for myself in this event? I've got you. I've got you covered. Um, if you didn't know, I actually have a resource out there called the Tick Bite Action Plan. I'm linking it in the description for you. I'm not even going to waste any time. I'll tell you that that exists. And I'm going to talk about um, action steps for tick bites today in this video, okay? So if you're catching this on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any future content ever. Um, and also make sure you're checking out also linked in the description, the Limey and Crunchy community. It is a free, holistic Lime healing resource for you. All right, created for you with tons more goodies there. All kinds of uh, like announcements, first come, first serve on all kinds of opportunities for furthering your healing journey as a whole person. All right, no matter what you may or may not be be doing for treatment or no matter how you feel about antibiotics and herbals and all different factors of Lyme disease treatment and what healing can look like, that community space is open to all because every journey and every healing story is different. So my healing journey is part of why I tackle this topic the way I do and why I designed the Tickborn or I'm sorry, the Tick Bite action plan. It's because I found myself recently in recent years as a mother who was mostly healed at that time from Lyme and continuing to heal from Lyme and co-infections. I still found myself with almost crippling anxiety and panic and fear and even some anger around ticks and tick bites and our family and our loved ones. And I found myself being controlled a little bit by this. And then not only was I experiencing like panic around the potential for tick bites or actual tick bites occurring, but my children were also starting to manifest some anxiety around tick bites as well. And I was seeing my struggle rubbing off on them. And I started to realize this was not how I could live my life. This stress and anxiety was not sustainable for my healing. And now my children's too. It was a lot of motivation for me to change the narrative. And one way I did that was through getting a grip a little bit, literally telling myself to get a grip on what I could and could not control. I cannot control every tick in the world. I cannot control the tick population fully, but I've done a few things to help control our immediate tick population, right? And some other things I've done too, to help control my own environment in ways that I literally can Another thing I did was put together for our family, for my mental sanity, I wrote down the action steps, literal words I used, that I could take to help our family so I could feel relief and empowerment instead of fear and anxiety about ticks and their actual ability to potentially bite us in life. But that's the reality. So... When I saw that plan for our family, I realized I can translate this into something that anyone can take and go forward in confidence with peace and empowerment around their journey instead of fear and anxiety. And thus, the Tick Bite Action Plan was born. So what does this mean for us? Okay, so here is my exact approach, literally. This is what I wrote down for our family's approach. And then created a download for everyone to be able to have for free too. Okay. It starts like this though. And I'm going to put some more thought behind it here in this live really quickly. And then you can go grab it for yourself and see what it entails, print it off, put it on your fridge, whatever you need to do with it. Okay. Um, okay. So first of all, this, the whole gist of this action plan is that being proactive, taking action 
And um, treating the bite is a best practice approach. You could say that there are many approaches you could take. I like to layer them as good approaches, better approaches, and best approaches, okay? You do what works for you, but in this case, I'm presenting best approaches, okay? For best case scenarios, for best outcomes. So rather than a watch and wait approach or let's wait and see, or a more conservative approach, this is an action-based approach on purpose because the fact of the matter is Lyme literate providers nationwide, worldwide, will tell you that quicker, proactive action yields better outcomes long-term, especially, okay? So part of the problem is because Lyme and co-infection symptoms may not show up after a bite immediately or for a while, if they ever do. And because we've talked already live here, how Lyme can wreak havoc in a variety of ways, the bottom line is the watch and wait approach is a much more touch and go and potentially dangerous approach considering how widespread and odd symptoms can be. And until you get to the bottom of them, how long that can take if Lyme doesn't present symptoms that are obvious immediately. And even then, some doctors won't even recognize that. So the bottom line is proactivity is better than no activity <laughs> against tick bites once they occur. Okay. So we've talked about how to prevent tick bites before on these live videos. Now, what do you do? Say you get one. Here are four steps. I'm going to stick with my notes for you. First of all, and these yield the best possible outcomes. These are the best things you can do. Um, and then, you know, yes, there's some amount of fate attached to everything in life, but this actually, you can say I did the best I could do. If you follow these steps, remove the tick properly, first of all. Okay. I link in my tick bite action plan, a blog post I did about exactly how to remove a tick to remove any, um, myths or theories out there about removing ticks with special equipment or special oils or special like putting something on the tick to make it back out of your body there's a lot of misinformation out there around how to remove a tick and the best information is literally the good old-fashioned tweezer approach grabbing the tick right by the skin by the head and removing it at the angle at which it is attached to you and saving the tick or tick parts if it ends up getting a little smashed in the process that's important. And you'll see why in a second. So after you remove the tick, you can indeed cleanse the site. I actually advise people clean the site of the bite because it was skin that was open to some degree. And so it has the potential for becoming infected there too. Um, or, you know, any kind of infectious process could occur at the site of the bite. Um, and you don't want that on top of potentially tick-borne illness infection internally as well. So good old-fashioned non-toxic soap and water is great. It doesn't have to be fancy. We also in our family have used rubbing alcohol and um, even applied essential oils repeatedly afterwards to just help with any irritation at the site of the bite. But cleaning it is fine, okay? Number two, send that tick for testing. That is why I told you to save it. Even the parts, even the smash tick, it doesn't matter. Um, oftentimes it doesn't take a lot of tick for them to be able to test it. And this is the best, most reliable testing compared to human testing. You also, as I'm going to say in a minute, little spoiler, you can't test a human right away, but you can test the tick right away. So this will give you some insight as to what the tick may have transmitted. Now, um, in Pennsylvania, that's where I'm from, there is a free testing option in Pennsylvania. It is not comprehensive, like fully comprehensive, but it is enough to give you some data at least and move forward with that information. It includes Lyme testing of the tick. Um, you can also pay for testing um, and upgrade testing from a variety of companies, but there's another one in the U.S. called Technology, and you can get testing through them as well. So don't feel like you are limited. Um, you may have to pay a small fee for some testing, but it's a much cheaper fee than dealing with treating Lyme and a lot of other things are going to cost potentially. So I say it is a hundred percent worth it. Then you know what you're dealing with. Okay. Especially if you would get symptoms down the road. So, you know, more of what you're dealing with one word of caution. 
Remember, unless you're literally paying to test the tick for everything possible, you are potentially not covering testing for all possible co-infections that a tick can carry. And even if you are paying for the most comprehensive testing, it may not include some co-infections. That is the case with um, the tick testing that we used in Pennsylvania. The most comprehensive panel they offered did not include rickettsia um, or Rocky Mountain spotted fever and Q fever testing. I knew that. I was just important to be aware of what we were not getting tested for, okay, uh, or not having the tick tested for. It wasn't an option in the testing that we chose. Okay, fair enough. Number three, send that tick off for testing and then treat further as soon as possible. There's no reason to delay treatment, whether that means you run to your PCP or urgent care after hours or whatever, um, the ER, in some cases people go there. My best recommendation, remember I said good, better, best. The best recommendation is to get to a Lyme literate provider. That means someone actually trained in treating Lyme disease, tick-borne illnesses, co-infections, all the things. Traditional doctors are not Lyme trained or tick-borne illness trained. They may have had a lecture on it in med school. They are not trained. <clears throat> just like you wouldn't go to just any physician for cancer specialty, you would go to a cancer specialist or <clears throat> for, excuse me, for orthopedic injuries, you go to an orthopedist. For a Lyme disease, you go to a Lyme specialist, a Lyme literate provider, okay? Um, I link in the Tick-Born Act or the Tick Bite Action Plan. I link um, to resources I've created for how to find them um, and what that looks like. But uh, that is the best suggestion. And know this: that that getting yourself tested, yourself tested for tick-borne illnesses, firstly, cannot be done accurately for six, four to six weeks after a bite. That's how long it takes to manifest antibodies in your body that could be testable. But Take that with point two, which is testing humans is not usually accurate anyway. It can be used. Um, certain certain labs that do testing are a little bit better than others, and some of those can be used by Lyme literate providers to help guide treatment and guide the situation. But they, the bottom line is, they should be taken with a grain of salt. Lab results on humans are taken with a grain of salt. And in the Lyme literate world, symptoms trump lab results. If you are symptomatic, no matter what your lab results say, something's going on from a tick-borne illness perspective. All right. Fourthly, support your body. This is maybe the most important point of them all, actually. You've been bit. What can you do? You can start immediately supporting your body to do what it's designed to do and fight infection and fight off any potential for damage to your cells and organs. You can start right away with that. And in some cases, it could be free or very, very cheap to do that. So in my Tick Bite Action Plan, I actually outline a whole host of ideas and ways you can support your body immediately. And they are actually also ways that support your health and wellness overall anyway. So they're very low risk and they're very easy and accessible things you can do. Okay. So grab that tick bite action plan next. As soon as I sign off here and I'm going to wrap up and then you can get that whole list too of ways you can support your body immediately. Um, of course, I have to say my disclaimer is I'm not here as a medical professional to treat, diagnose, cure. I'm here to share advice, experience, and education with you. So of course, before you do anything, you my best advice should be you should always talk to a trusted and knowledgeable provider that can understand what you're asking them and provide feedback about if it's right for you or not. Okay. Just remember that. All right. So take my advice with a grain of salt as well and do your own research and talk to your own providers. Hopefully you have a good provider team you can collaborate with and talk to and respect. Mutual respect, very important. All right, you guys. So now what you're gonna go do is sign off here, go download the Tick Bite Action Plan and get started utilizing it today so you're ready to go no matter what. Heaven forbid a Tick Bite should cross your path. Okay. But at least now you're going to be prepared. All right. So be prepared. Let me just set that down. Go forth in peace, in confidence, 
and in health, my friends. Bye for now.